You know, you can see that, uh, that first, first time I saw a dust cloud coming, coming this way, it's coming from the northwest. It was just kind of scary. It really looked like, you know, I don't know whether that's solid or not, but it looked solid. <laughs> and it, when it got there, it felt like it was solid. It was terrible. Terrible. The, uh, oh my. The Could, dirt would just blow in the house and uh, pile up on the windowsills. Oh, it was awful. as black as night and it we didn't know what it was the first thing we knew it was dirt just plain old dirt I just remember the dust clouds coming in it was dust from out west it wasn't so much dust that came from here north and west it came from the north and west mm -hmm. uh, that uh, was the uh, first Republican that was ever elected in Oklahoma to the Oklahoma State Senate in 1932. Okay. And he was running for Congress in 1936 and we were all out on the road. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember that very well. <clears throat> I'd sit in the back seat of that uh, Ford and uh, we had a PA system and uh, I'd say, vote for my daddy for Congress. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was just so hot, it was just ridiculous. <laughs> I think the, uh, the hottest that I remember is 117. Oh, wow. And it was just <laughs> beyond, <laughs> beyond hope. <laughs> oh, yes, it was hot. Very hot. And of course, we had not even a fan. Uh, my mother would hang a wet towel over the window and then we'd lay on her bed so we could get a little bit of air. And that was our cooling system. <laughs> it was uh, getting hot and dry. It, it wasn't really all that dry here, but we out west, it was. 1936, I entered uh, uh, Longfellow, and uh, that that fall, and that's when the worst dust storms hit, I believe, that I remember. Uh, you know, the dust bowl, of course, that was a horrible time. I can remember coming home from school, and you couldn't even see the, we mostly had linoleum in the house at that time, and you couldn't see the print on the linoleum. The dust, the dust have sifted in. Well, it was so fine. It was such a fine, fine dust. Hmm. And, it, and you couldn't even see the print on it. Wow. I remember one time that uh, Mr. Vance, Leon Vance, who the base was named after his son, <coughs> was, uh, he turned everybody out so he could find their way home. It was, just, it was really down to quarter mile of visibility and dust. And uh, uh, <clears throat> which tickled me to death, but <laughs> I only lived at uh, two blocks from school at that time, so <laughs> I made it home all right. But the, uh, a couple of other times I remember in uh, at Longfellow, I could I couldn't see the other, the other end of the hall inside the school. And uh, I don't know why they wouldn't. I really wanted them to let it out again. You'd go out and you'd get your mouth would be gritty. And uh, it, was, it was bad. Well, we put a wet cloth over our nose and mouth to keep the dust out. Uh, tumbleweeds. I haven't seen any tumbleweeds lately. But they used to have tunnel weeds that would uh, roll up against the barbed wire fence and the dust would catch that, but that was mainly out west. Now your grandfather was a was a farmer, is that right? Yeah, a carrier. And 
One of the stories he told was about the prairie dog that was digging 10 feet in the air, digging a hole. <laughs> Did you get my email about uh, George Essel out there, the carrier? He uh, I think so. bought a brand new Ford from uh, uh, Neil Ford here in Enid, and he drove it to carrier, and, <clears throat> and he got in a uh, uh, dust devil. While he was driving out there, he drove out into a field while on his way to Carrier to look at something. He was in this, got in this dust devil, and he finally stopped, waited for it to go by, and he couldn't get the car started again. <laughs> and it was, it was filled up with dust. Took a bath every Saturday night, whether we needed it or not. <laughs> we got the wash tub in, and every time we. The next one came to take a bath. They put another kettle of hot water in the bathtub. And by the time it got to my daddy, I think it was pretty thick. <laughs> Granddad had a uh, log chain tied to a gate post that was about that long. And uh, he would, uh, it wouldn't reach across the, the gap at the, then the gate but he'd sit there and wait for somebody to ask him what that log chain was doing on that gate post. And he said, that's to see whether the wind is blowing. <laughs>